I want to address what the protesters raised earlier. Uh, is Israel committing genocide in Gaza? Uh, Senator Cotton, I, we don't have any evidence of genocide uh, being uh, created. Uh, so that's a, that's a no. Israel's not committing genocide in Gaza. Uh, we don't have evidence of that, to Thank my you. knowledge. Yeah. Better than Director Burns and Director Haynes did last, year, last month at the Intelligence Committee when they dodged that question. Um, you stand accused by those protesters of greenlighting genocide. Would you like to respond to that accusation? Uh, what I would say, uh, Senator Cotton, from the very beginning is that we uh, committed to help uh, assist uh, in, uh, Israel in defending its, uh, uh, its territory and its people by providing security assistance. And I would remind everybody that, you know, what happened on uh, October 7th was absolutely horrible. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, numbers of, uh, of uh, of uh, Israeli citizens uh, um, killed, uh, and then um, a couple of hundred uh, Israeli citizens uh, taken hostage. American and citizens as well. American, American citizens as well. So, so you deny the accusation that you green, greenlit genocide? I, I, I absolutely do not. Okay. For the record, I don't think Israel's committing genocide. I don't believe you greenlit genocide either. Now today, I want to underscore three key messages. First, even as our budget request... The committee stands at recess until the uh, Capitol Police can restore order. Enough is enough. How many children have to die? How many children have to die for you to be satisfied? Enough killing my people. Enough. Stop bombing Gaza. Stop funding Israel. The committee is in recess. I would direct the Capitol Police to uh, with the the remove the, not the war demonstrators. We have plenty of money for war, and we seemingly have no money for the people. Secretary Austin, did a genocide occur ar around the uh, Gaza region and, uh, and around the, the uh, Gaza-Israeli border on October 7 of last year? What we witnessed on October 7th, uh, uh, Senator, was a horrific terrorist attack by Hamas. Well, was it a genocide? Uh, well, it... it well, let, let, me, let me be more specific. Uh, when uh, when non-combatant Israelis were killed, when their families were burned alive, was that a genocide? Well, I... Again, uh, Israel suffered a, a terrific blow when... Well, okay, uh, so uh, you're not willing to call it a genocide. Uh, I, was, was it a war crime? It certainly is, is a war crime. Yes. And uh, when, uh, when non-combatant Americans were taken prisoner by Hamas, was that a war crime? It, all of that. You know, the, the rape, the, the murder, the, the taking of, of hostages, of prisoners, all of that uh, was, uh, was, a, was, was a war crime. Was a war crime. Yeah. And, and, um, and that, uh, on October 7th, that was, the war crime was entirely committed um, uh, on, on the part of Hamas that day, was it not? It, it was. And uh, since that time, General, is it true that Hamas has, in, in violation of international law, um, placed civilians uh, in places that uh, they knew would be vulnerable to attack and used civilians as a human shield. We've consistently seen Hamas use civilians as... as, for, as, as During as the time shield. since October 7, in, in Gaza, right? That's right. And that is a continuation of war crimes, is it not? It is. Um, it, Secretary Austin, if, if Hamas laid down their arms today, would the conflict stop in and around Gaza? 
it would stop, would it not? It, uh, we certainly would hope so, uh, but, uh, you know, that's left to be seen. And I don't want to speculate, but, but uh, that's well, the goal. Well, who, star who started the conflict on October Hamas 6th? initiated this, this conflict, Senator. If, if Israel laid down its arms today, would Hamas stop their aggression against Israel? Um, I seriously doubt that. They, they wouldn't, would they? Yeah. Uh, you talked a lot with Senator Reid about Israel's responsibility to provide aid in Gaza. Why does Israel have a responsibility to provide aid to Gaza? Israel was the victim of an unprovoked, vicious attack on October 7th. Why should they provide aid to, their, to the aggressor nation? Or aggressor. Uh, Gaza's not a nation. To the aggressors on October 7th. We didn't provide aid to Germany and Japan during World War II. Uh, what we, we did provide aid to uh, and assistance to many of the countries that we've operated in recently. As but not we, in World War II. If you had been in George Marshall's or Dwight Eisenhower's position in World War II, would you have wanted to provide aid to Germany? I, I, I really do believe, Senator, that if they want to create a, a lasting uh, effect in, in terms of uh, stability, then I think that uh, something needs to be done to account uh, to, uh, to help uh, the, the Palestinian people. I get, yeah. I, I get that, but they're in the middle of the war. Like we, we believe that, too, after World War II. That's why we had the Marshall Plan. That's why we rebuilt Japan. But that was after the war was won, not in the middle of it. And in it, the meantime, like if it's, it's not Israel's responsibility to provide aid. It's certainly not our responsibility, but we're spending t our tax dollars to build this giant pier to send aid into Gaza. Who's going to accept that aid? Who's going to be at the end of the pier on the shore taking aid from American forces? It, that's, that's still uh, being worked out, but there, there will be uh, uh, NGOs that, uh, that, that will help to distribute that but aid. Not, uh, that Hamas is in charge of Gaza. When aid goes to Gaza, Hamas doesn't divert it or commandeer it or steal it. It accepts it. And anybody operating in Gaza is under the thumb of Hamas. I just think it's very ill-considered, and I don't think it's going to end very well. Secretary Austin, under your leadership, the United States has made preventing civilian harm a top priority. You have repeatedly said that it is both a moral and a strategic imperative. Uh, I have pressed the DOD to take this issue more seriously for years, and in 2022, DOD issued its Civilian Harm Mitigation and Response Action Plan which directs the department to systematically take steps to prevent, mitigate, and respond to civilian harm. Policy makes clear that we expect our military partners to prioritize civilian harm prevention as well. Since October, Israeli strikes have killed over 30,000 Palestinians. The majority of them are women and children. Rafah has become the latest refuge of Palestinian civilians, is now home to more than 1.4 million people. Given the number of civilians there, the Biden administration has repeatedly urged Israel not to attack Rafah, saying that doing so would be, quote, a disaster. Secretary Austin, do you think an attack on Rafah that kills another 30,000 civilians would enhance either U.S. or Israeli security? Uh, thanks, Senator. Um, there's no question that f there have been far too many civilian casualties uh, in this conflict, far too many. Uh, and what we continue to emphasize to the Israelis is that, um, you know, the civilians in that battle space uh, need to be uh, not only evacuated, but properly taken care of once they're evacuated out of that battle space uh, before anything is contemplated. And, uh, and I, you know, this is a point that I, I have stressed with my, uh, with my counterpart uh, on a number of occasions. Just recently, it's yesterday. And, uh, and again, um, it, it, it cannot be, uh, going forward, what we've seen in the past in terms of the the type of uh, activities that we've seen in, uh, in Gaza City and in Khan Yunus. Uh, far too many civilians uh, have, have, uh, have been killed as a result of uh, combat operations, and, and they, they need to get uh, civilians out of, out of that battle space around Rafah. All right. So the United States has an important responsibility here because we are the ones giving the Israeli Defense Forces the bombs that they are using to destroy homes and hospitals and refugee camps. 
At the President's direction through his February National Security Memorandum, the Department of Defense and the State Department are currently assessing whether Israel is in compliance with international humanitarian law. There are serious concerns that Israel is not complying with international humanitarian law. According to recent investigations by PLUS 972 and The Guardian, Israeli intelligence officials allege that the IDF often deliberately prefers to wait until its targets are at home among their children and neighbors to launch a strike. Secretary Austin, I understand that civilians are often at risk in a time of war. But would the United States systematically choose to execute on military strikes that are more likely to kill civilians, including children? Uh, absolutely not. Just the opposite. Uh, you know, we um, routinely go out of our way to make sure that uh, we do everything we can to uh, minimize civilian casualties. Uh, e even with that, uh, even with extraordinary efforts, there will be um, collateral uh, damage and, and casualties from time to time, but it's, it's something that we really work hard to, uh, to prevent. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Secretary. U.S. policy explicitly states that we expect our allies to meet the same standards that we do to prevent and mitigate civilian harm. Israel is failing to do that in its bombing campaign. Under your leadership, DOD has made significant progress in putting policies in place to protect civilians. But we also need to push our closest allies to meet the same standard and to cut off U.S. support if they refuse to do so. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.